Hello, it is a pleasure having you with us on OGTV News. I am Yabo Awujola. First, the highlights. ASU extends strike by eight weeks. INEC publishes list of Ikiti State's governorship candidates, devolves IVED machine in Ogun State. NDLEA opposes Aba Kiaris bill application. Plus, 17 million people come under full COVID lockdown in China. Count your age by friends, not years. Count your life by smart years. And coming up on the business segment of the nails, House of Reps summons an NPC, NDTC others, over 2.6 million naira debt earned by oil companies. Join me for details on the business segment of the nails. I am Bukola Agbakiso. And tonight on the sports segment of the news, Ghana may host Super Eagles at neutral venue. These are many more when I return later. My name, Hakim Akitunde. You're welcome. And now to the main news. There is need for all stakeholders to play their parts in building towards a true democracy. This was the submission of some Nigerians who spoke with OGTV News on stakeholders in democratic governance. Elizabeth Esson reports. Nation building is the process whereby a society of people with diverse origins, histories, languages, cultures, and religions come together within the boundaries of a suffering state with a unified constitutional and legal dispensation. A democratic country, on the other hand, is a system of government in which the people have the power to participate in decision making. With the present situation in Nigeria, some legal practitioners who spoke with OGTV News explained that some part of the constitution denied citizens the right of decision making in democracy, thereby putting the process of nation building at risk. So to build a nation, some part of the constitution ought to be removed, which would give right to people, to the electorate, to Nigerians, a right to approach you know, the government and the courts, if need be, to ask questions about governance. It behoves on the citizens to do what is expected of them by obeying, by paying your tax regularly, by obeying all laws that are in place, and by Im implementing to the latter. Not a nature that is not full of favoritism, that is not, uh, you know, that is that will follow law strictly censored. To some social commentators, many factors need to for true democracy to be achieved. A viable nation. Every individual Nigerian must strive to be patriotic. But where there is lack of patriotism, nation building will be at will be in danger. We must ensure that we shun all forms of ethnicism. Once we see ourselves as Nigerians, it is easier for us to actually build the Nigerian nation. The democracy we talk about is not. Um, it's not all that bad, but at, at, at the moment we are not getting the best out of it. Not because democracy is not good, it is simply because we have wrong people manning these sensitive areas of our lives. It means if you occupy a position of authority through people's votes, then you have to develop what we call people-oriented policy that will give back to people-oriented program and equally give back to people-oriented projects. According to respondents, true democracy can be achieved if every stakeholder is given the opportunity to play his part as stipulated in the nation's constitution. Elizabeth Tesson, OGTV News. More than 15 years after the last population count, Africa's most populous country, Nigeria, is ready to conduct its first ever digital census in May 2022. In this report, Runke Adeyemi explains the importance of digital population census in nation building and the plight of the census enumerators in the face of insecurity in the country. 
2006 was the last time Nigeria conducted population census, and the result of that census put the population of the country at over 140 million persons, comprising 71.3 male and 69 million female. The Nigeria population has since then increased. The population of Nigeria has been a very contentious and each exercise has been marked by religious and ethnic interest as each group attempted to manipulate census figures to its advantage, leading to postponements of the exercise. Keeping up with current times, Nigeria is with the population census and unlike the analog era, global positioning systems, GPS, geographic information IS and computer assisted map production in the system will make it very easy for a reliable and credible census. Chairman of the National Population Commission, NPC, Nasir Isakwara, has consistently assured the nation that NPC will be ready in May 2022 to conduct what he described as the first digital population census in Nigeria. But even the much awaited presidential proclamation is yet to be made. It was determined that in this new era, it's about time that Nigeria is caught up with the rest of the world in conducting digital enumeration. The world digital itself is sweet. Everything is turning to digital, selling. Everything you're doing has upgraded and has taken to the sky. Every, every other thing apart from digital is referred to as manual something. And the knowledge of persons in the world now has moved from the manual to the digital. It's also good that we want to digitalize it. So we run away from the manual one, just like we said earlier from where we're coming from. As uh, nations involved, we must also try to evolve our processes to let, make it less cumbersome and more electronic, because that is actually where the world is going. In spite of the security situation, as well as the upcoming elections, Respondents were of the opinion that it may be more beneficial to postpone the censors. I wouldn't know why we're so much in a hurry. It's not only the security, the electioneering period as well. How do you conduct a census in between election period and the security challenges on our hand? That's not to say that the government is not doing the best possible in terms of the security challenges. That's not to say that uh, it's not possible, but we are expected that uh, we should be able to conduct it when there is a relative peace permeating the whole nation. They however remain skeptical about the proposed date of the census, but emphasize the importance of accurate data in it will speak for us. It will speak in our favor. It will help you to plan better on how to attend. Now we say we are 200 million. We have found 200 million persons. Now do we plan now you plan for 200 million not knowing that your plan your plan should have been for 400 million if you don't have a data to work with as a government it is zero as far as i'm concerned you will be able as a government to determine how to go about the act of governance and administration without this we'll just be groping in the dark we need a census after this year's ed count first time in interval ensuring a 10 years interval to maintain accuracy of data in line with globally accepted standards. And if Nigeria must get it right, the Commission must strive to conduct credible and widely acceptable censors. At Deronke Adeyemi, OGTV News. Technical and vocational education has an important role to play in the industrial growth and development of any society as it is a fulcrum upon which the social economic transformation of a society rests on. This was a submission of respondents who spoke on social economic benefits of technical and vocational education, especially among the youths. Margaret Okunlola has the details. According to the recently released Labour Forum, published by the National Bureau of Statistics, about 33.3% of Nigerians are unemployed as a bigger chunk of the population are in search of white-collar jobs. Though the latest attitude towards the acquisition of technical education is undeniably increasing. Technical education is the training for acquisition of skills for specific vocation or trade. According to respondents, 
Technical education is a propellant to socioeconomic heights in the society. Nigeria is going through a developmental stage of infrastructural development. Let the policy encourage the engineers, especially the indigenous engineers. Let there be what we call re-engineering. Manufacturing requires technical know-how. We need technical people to put them into practice. So if you don't if engineers design anything and there are no technical know-how, to develop them, then we are nowhere to go. Interviews through um, um, examination and uh, academic program to encourage at secondary school level to show interest in engineering. Gender is not a limitation when it comes to acquiring technical and vocational skills, says this concerned Nigerians. The era of engineering being a professional in psychological belief of the, the traditional belief of our Yoruba that it's basically a, a female, a male profession moving on. And you could see it also that nationally too, we are having a female performing very well. Professor Abayo Miyari Babu. Ogun State Commissioner for Education, Science and Technology added his voice to the discourse by revealing plans to ensure technical education is repositioned for economic rejuvenation in the state. We have this special technical education um, and that's why we are working with the World Bank on the Oxter project that is the Ogun State Economic Transformation project um, there is a particular segment of that project that is dedicated to technical education and with that project we are going to turn around all our technical colleges to look at what are the gaps gaps skill gaps in Ogun State and also to refocus just college, uh, technical colleges based on the 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 the, the, the the localities they, where they are, looking at what, where, what will they serve, uh, what type of uh, provision of training should they give in that particular location. Professor Arigbabu emphasized the need to encourage and sensitize the public, especially the younger generation, on the prospect and economic advantage of technical education as an integral part of it in the society. Margaret Okunola. OGCV News. Next, INEC releases final list of AKT governorship election candidates. We will bring you details of these and more after the break. Join us again. Oopsie daisy, don't call me crazy. I'm just learning as I go. Is easy. New Dulux Easy Care with stain resist technology, the ultimate washable matte paint. Dulux, let's color. Glad having you again. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju has lauded the West African Examinations Council for its quick responses which show respect for citizens. Professor Oshimbaju said this when he received at the Presidential Villa Abuja a delegation of the examinations body in town for the Council's 70th annual meeting. The, special, the Senior Special Assistant to the Vice President on Media and Publicity, Laolua Kondi, disclosed this in a statement, citing reports that digital certificates are now available to those who lost physical copies of their certificates. The Vice President said this kind of quick responses show respect for citizens. He expressed joy that the examinations cancelled and aligns with the digital technology age in different areas. 
He noted that beyond core regulatory rules, government agencies must always show that they are responsible to the people that they serve and that they hold them in high esteem. Vice President Oshibajo also highlighted and of the examinations body to the issue of some candidates having difficulties regarding the national identification. The body responded due to the challenges with the NIMC portal at the time and the affected candidates could still sit for the examinations. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has extended its ongoing strike by eight weeks as the federal government has failed to satisfactorily address all the issues raised in the 2022 FGN-ASO Memorandum of Action within the four-week warning strike. President of the Union, Emmanuel Oshodeke, made this known in a statement. Oshodeke noted that the National Executive Council during the meeting on Sunday concluded that federal government eight weeks to address all the issues in concrete terms so that students will resume. According to the statement, NEC acknowledged the intervention efforts in various ways by patriots and friends of genuine national development to expeditiously this which government's disposition had allowed to fester. However, ASU as a union has historical obligations to make government's honor agreements. NEC having taken reports on the engagements of the trustees and principal officers with the government concluded that government had failed to satisfactorily address all the issues raised in the 2020 federal government ASO memorandum of action within the four-week rollover strike period and resolved that the strike be rolled over for another eight weeks to give government more time to address all the issues in corporate terms so that as soon as possible. Well, the Minister of State for Education, Mr. Chukwemeka Nwajubu, has reacted to the ASO's declaration of the extension of his industrial strike by two months, saying it had met all the demands of the union. Nwajubu, who insisted that the federal government had met all of the demands of the union added that all end allowances as well as revitalization funds have been released. He said after ASO announcement, both parties met and everything that they have demanded the federal government has done, all of them, including the end allowances fund. However, they choose to extend it for two months. ASU had rolled over its initial one-month strike, which ended on March 14, for another two months, having failed to reach a beneficial resolution as regards the outstanding 2009 ASU federal government agreement. ASU also accused the federal government of working against the deployment of the UTAS, a payment platform designed by ASU in lieu of the IPPIS payment system. The Independent National Electoral Commission has urged political parties and the stakeholders to obey court orders and statutory guidelines in their conduct ahead of 2023 elections. INEC Secretary Rose Uriaron Anthony said this while receiving a letter from the Guardian of Democracy and Rule of Law who were on a solidarity rally to the Commission over the recently signed 2022 electoral law. The secretary who received the letter on behalf of the INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, assured the activists that INEC as a law-abiding commission would continue to respect the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the judiciary in particular in all her undertakings. She promised that all the contents of the letter will be strictly adhered to. The convener of the group, Chris Opai, who presented the letter, said events that culminated in the signing into law of the 2022 Electoral Act signaled a beautiful beginning for Nigerians towards entrenching and sustaining its nascent democracy. 
He said the implication of the coming on board of the new electoral act signaled that moving forward, Nigeria's democratic institutions will be strengthened and elections will be credible, free and fair. The INEC, the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC, has published the final list of candidates for the Kiti governorship election slated for June 18. The list includes 16 governorship candidates vying for the position. This was disclosed in a statement by the National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okoye. He said the, la the list was released in compliance with the Electoral Act 2022 and following the close of nominations by political parties. The statement political parties that under Section 32.2 of the Electoral Act 2022, any party that observes that the name of his candidate is missing from the list shall notify the commission in writing, signed by its national chairman and secretary, supported with an affidavit not later than 90 days to the election. Okoye, in the statement, said the attention of parties is drawn to Section 32.3 of the Electoral Act 2022, which provides that failure to notify the Commission shall not be ground to invalidate the election. The final list is published in INEC state and local government offices in Ekiti State, as well as their website and media platforms for public information as required by law. Still on election matters, in a move to give all eligible Nigerians opportunity to register or correct their data ahead of the 2023 general elections, the Independent National Electoral has devolved the INEC voter enrollment device machine to the world level of registration areas in Ogun State. In a statement by Head of Voter Education, Mrs. Adenike Tadishi, on behalf of the Resident Electoral Commissioner Ogun INEC office, this became imperative to further ensure all eligible registrants and voters are captured in the ongoing continuous voter registration CVR exercise. The statement asks that the exercise at the registration areas will start from 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon from Mondays through Fridays, exclusive of weekends and public holidays. The affected persons should avail themselves the opportunity of approaching their registration areas for registration when the machine gets to their area. Governor Willie Obiano of Anambra State has announced the dissolution of his cabinet and termination of the appointments of cabinet members and aides with effect from March 16. The notice of termination is contained in a circular signed by Professor Solo Chukumbulubelu, the secretary to the Anambra State Government on Monday. Obiano is expected to hand over to the incoming governor, Professor Chukuma Soludo, on March 17, when his eight years two-term tenure expires. Chukumbulubelu said that those affected include all political appointees, secretary to the state staff, Principal Secretary, Chief Press Secretary and Commissioners. Others are Special Advisors, Chairmen and Members of Non-Statutory Boards, Agencies and Committees, Senior Special Assistants, Special Assistants. Chukwu Lebelu said the fate of those in tenured appointments such as Managing Directors and CEOs, Executive Secretaries and Provosts were not affected by the circular and will be determined by the next government. Over 250 people have benefited from an empowerment program sponsored by member representing Adu Duota State Constituency 1 and Majority Leader of the State House of Assembly, Honorable Sharif. Kola Waliosho, who covered the event, reports that Speaker Right Honorable Lakunlio staff of the lawmaker, presented the empowerment items ranging from freezers, grinding machines, among other items to the beneficiaries who were drawn from eight wards of the constituency. Details of the event are presented in this package. Empowerment plays a vital and significant role in poverty alleviation and eradication from society. 
empowerment usually focus more on development of human skill making it a better source of earning for beneficiary it was against this backdrop that a member representing Ado Daughter State Constituency 1 and Majority Leader of the Ogun State House of Assembly of Honorable Sharif Yusuf empowered over 250 people in the constituency. He revealed his primary laws that will be of great benefit to his constituents. But one cannot look away from people that must be empowered to make a better living and also to support good work embarked upon by Governor Dakwabiodo in his human development programs. When people are empowered, they are equipped with skill and knowledge to earn a living. In this way, they will both be able to get paid employment to start a business and earn an income. And even if we cannot totally eradicate unemployment and poverty, at least we can bring the minimum. According to he had earlier provided soccer to students of his constituency and by extension their parents by providing school buses tagged Ibeman free school bus for easy ride to and from their various schools. Speaker, right Honorable Olakunle Oluomo lauded the effort of Honorable Sharif Yusuf for facilitating the program, adding that it will go a long way in bringing soccer to the people. Which, as the House of Assembly, ninth legislature, we shall continue to empower our people to bring unemployment and poverty to the barest minimum. Leaders of the All Progressives Congress in the constituency, Senator Akinodusi, and Chairman Ogun State House of Assembly Commission, Honorable Waliu Taiwo, have positive remarks about the event. It's a very good. He has proven that he really loves his people. He arranged transport system for the students without paying cover. This is another one that he has done now. This is a form of empowerment. Among the items distributed by Honorable Sharif Yusuf, ranging from motorcycles, generators, grinding machines, gas cylinders, sewing machines, standing fan, chest freezers, mini home theater system, clippers to cash donations, to whom much is given, much is expected. Beneficiaries appreciated this gesture. I want to appreciate him more because this one will go a long way to speak a lot about him. They encourage their benefactor to sustain the gesture, promising judicious usage of the items. 31 Nigerians on Monday morning arrived from Ukraine through Romania aboard Turkish Airlines. The Nigerian Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced this on their official Twitter page stating that the returnees arrived at about half past six in the morning at the Inamdi Azikiwe International Airport, Abuja. Officials of the Ministry and National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons received the returnees at the airport. A director in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Bolaji Akinremi, and Honorable Federal Commissioner of the Commission, Haj Imam Ibrahim, received the 31 returnees from Romania. Fresh facts have emerged on how Super Corps and former commander of the Intelligence Response Team, IRT, DCP Abakiari, as well as his deputy, ACP Sonde Uba, allegedly received a combined 4.2 billion naira from their separate bank accounts. The details are part of a report sent to the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, by the NDLEA. According to the Drug Enforcement Agency, not less than 1.4 billion naira passed through Kiari's account while he was commander of the IRT. However, Kiari's deputy, Uba, received far more than him as not less than 2.8 billion naira was traced to his eight bank accounts into investigation allegedly received a lump sum of 2.664 billion naira on August 15, 2019. The NDLEA is now working on the assumption that the sums traced to Kiari and his deputy may be connected to the same substances, including tramadol worth 3 billion naira. The IRT under Kiari's command seized these drugs and they are believed to have sold the consignment to a cartel afterwards. It was around the time of this seizure that Kiari's deputy received a deposit